I'm Danny Dyer, and this is The Real Football Factories. I played Tommy Johnson in the movie The Football Factories, which was all about football violence. But that was just acting. Now I'm on a journey around the country meeting the real firms who have mass offs at football matches for real. No fake blood, no stuntmen, no makeup. This time it's just me and the country's hardest hooligans. I meet the real top boys who tell you the score. My journey through London's firm starts with Millwall. Historically, they have one of the most feared hooligan reputations in the country, never mind the capital. A trawl through the newspaper archives reveals an unparalleled history of hooliganism at Millwall. The old den was closed by the FA more than any other ground, five times between 1920 and 1978. And in the 70s, their hooligans were profiled in the first TV attempt to explain this rise in football violence. In the trench warfare of the terraces, it's F Troop who go over the top. F Troop are the real nutters. And I'm not going away for some dirty northern punts to spit all over me. No, if he no, spits no, over no, me, no. I'll put a fucking pint glass in his head. Self-confessed loonies like Harry the dog, who go looking for fights and are seldom disappointed. Well, we want to do a few gazes out there, like. We're the F Troop, see what I mean? We love a row. We go football. And this is it. Tell me a bit more about the F Troop and old Bob, like obviously proper firm, yeah? You know, he was one of the, the top boys, yeah? F, F Troop are guys who were absolutely ruthless, a lot of them psychopaths, no fear whatsoever. You're talking about a, a firm which didn't have big numbers. We used to go into ends, 10, 20, 30 and and take on the whole end. The papers called it a terrace rampage. It was caused by a dozen or so of Millwall's nutters when I was a kid, I'd look at the, all, the top, the, the, all the leaders of Millwall, the top guys, and I thought, I want to be like them. Look at, look at the power they've got. They've got a big gang. They go to a pub. They don't even have to buy for a drink. If you go out socially afterwards with some of the boys, sometimes the local girls in the area, you, you get girls, you, oh, this, you're a famous name and all that. It, it's the whole sort of... It's, 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 it's a bit like bling-bling, in a way, but to do with the football. Bob, straight, I don't know regrets for you. Is there any regrets for the life you've led? If I'm a time again, I wouldn't go to, along the same path. OK. But, having said that, working class boy out the Elephant Castle, the old man took me to the club. I followed the team religiously. It's yeah. like a religion. It still is to people. Millwall has been involved in one of the most intense rivalries in London for the last 30 years, and their hated enemy is West Ham. Fucking mouth as usual, kiddies. Kiddies, though. This is Fortress Upton Park, right? Millwall have come in. 1978 Judgment Day. It's just pure hate, yeah. <laughs> right. This this is the most violent derby of all. This is the one the helicopter was up in the air. Yeah, they're the biggest police turnout. But it, you want to know about West Ham Mill because the day they talk about Tottenham as their rivals, you know what I mean? Yeah. And people forget their history. It's always been them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's only them. Hmm? In the world of the football firms, the ICF commanded huge respect wherever they went. The ICF um, is initials for the intercity firm, yeah. Um, it was a sinister name called Call Sign for the violent following that followed West Ham um, originally. Eventually, it became so infamous that normal West Ham supporters adopted it mm -hmm. uh, because everyone just knew him by that name. Obviously, uh, in the early 80s, everyone gave each other names, you know what I mean? Or give themselves names. What? Ours was the Headhunters. How'd um, that come about? What was it? What, what was it? I don't, I don't know, to be true, but I couldn't tell you who started it off, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? I, if I, you know, if I was to say who started off, I'd be lying, but whoever came up with it, I think, I think it was blinding, do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, you know? For a section of Chelsea's fans today, Jason's achieved a kind of celebrity status. He's even asked to autograph DVDs about his hooligan career. I should bring back the shit days, they the best songs. Exactly. There you go, mate. Cheers, mate. Cheers, mate. Cheers, mate. Cheers, Cheers, mate. Have, have a good day, yeah? Have a good day, Cheers. mate. Yeah, see ya. So you was one of the top boys then, yeah? I wouldn't say I was a top boy, I was a respected lad at Chelsea, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, I mean, we, uh, see, at Chelsea, we're like a family. No one, um, no one says, oh, I'm the top kid, do, 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 yeah, do. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah. You just, no you one allocates themselves to the top No, boy, you no. just, you know, you have a bit of respect for each other and you, you, how do you feel about meeting here? What do you think about this? Becoming an hooligan, yeah? What, what, you know, what was it for you? What was it, growing up? Is it, were you always a violent or what? You just wanted yeah, to no, up? What was it? 
I believe it starts from an early age. You know, I've always, I've always maintained that schools fight schools, different boroughs fight different boroughs, yeah. different housing estates fight different housing estates. You know, and so on. You know what I mean? Different boys clubs fight different boys clubs, and um, mm. you know, you, you I support Chelsea, you support West Ham. You're passionate. You're passionate about where you come from, who you support. You know, it's you about believe. Your manner, isn't it, really? Yeah, your, you, your manner, your manner, your territory. You don't want people taking liberties. Do you know? Oh, you know, being brutal, mate. It just comes about. You know, it comes about through respect, and it comes about through, you know, through my actions over the years. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Well, no proper moment for you when you thought, right, this is a bit of me. Do you know what I mean? I tell you, what, I tell you, yeah, about ten years ago. We had, a, we had it with Man City on the pavement. I remember someone turning around and saying, mate, you're fucking, that's it, mate, you've done it, you know what I mean? And I was like, yeah, yeah, this is me, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, this yeah, is yeah, fucking yeah. what I'm about, you know? And, you know, and be truthful, I set out to do that and set out to bring our firm together. But the Yids, where'd that come from? Yids is, is something, I'll tell you something, I used to fucking despise that name, yeah? A long time ago, it really gave me the ump. There's one of them things, Dan, you know, we, you know, West Ham, Chelsea used to go years and fucking dirty years and all that, and he used to tell that I used to find it quite offensive, you know? Yeah, 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 and that's what I thought. That's, right, that's how uh, I booked it, you but know what, what I mean? But what, what it was, you know, whereas other firms had, like, a proper defined name, you know, like fucking, you know, Headhunters, ICF, whatever, yeah. you know, we sort of, like, adopted the Yids. I mean, all the Barmies used to fucking do it in the ground, Yids, Yids, and Yids, and all that carry yeah. on. And, we, and as the firm, you know, progressed, and over the last 10 years, it's got stronger and closer, we, you know, we have got the... I ain't just being biased. We've got we've had the naughtiest firm in the country over the last ten years. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, you know that that name has just been adopted. You know, your your arch rivals, right? Yeah. yeah. Now, I would say Arsenal. Yeah. yeah. Ain't no, is it? Ain't no, is it? Not the firm. No. Who would it be? Not this Chelsea. It's that, Chelsea. Yeah. Without a fucking doubt. You know what I mean? Okay. And you know, and in a way, you know what I mean. I do respect their firm because we've had wars with them for ten years. You know what I mean? Yeah. I fucking hate Chelsea. Everyone knows that. You know, but um. I respect them because we've had wars with them for the last 10 years, you know what I mean? They're the only people that have really come to us, you know what I mean? And, and, and sort of like, well, we've gone to them all the time, but right anyone who's given us any competition. The rivalry between the Spurs and Chelsea firms became headline news when they clashed outside the Ifield Tavern near Stamford Bridge. 200 of Tottenham's firm gathered at nearby pubs, then left at a given time and marched onto Ifield Road. And Chelsea were at the bottom of the road. It was just something you fucking dreamed about, really, do you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Something I dream about, you know what I mean? Not everyone else does, you know? Given their due, they stood their ground. But the booze had got annihilated. Yeah, there was a lot of claret about. It was a lot of, you know, got yeah. messy. Yeah. It's always been much tougher for the firms and all that, what with the old CCTV and the old bill oh, and all that. Fucking... Have, have you got your nut round now? It's a, it's a nightmare, mate. As in, as in uh, you know, <laughs> I mean, I got my nut round. I ended up doing three years inside, didn't I? Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. I, got put away, I got put away with Tottenham Chelsea. That was all on camera. I mean, it's the operation they used to get hold of me. Yeah. It was like something that you see on films. You only you don't think it happens in real life. I mean, they were, there was old Bill dressed as workmen, carpenters and all that outside West Kensington Station. Proper surveillance. Yeah. And then, like, up above the boozer we met in, it was a camera crew filming the whole thing. And then two weeks later, the door come off and I copped three years, you know what I mean? I would stress, though, it ain't for the, it's not just for the sake of having a row. Mm. It's people that know what they're doing, do you know what I mean? Yeah. You're having a row with other like-minded people, you know? Football violence provided the rich storyline for the film The Football Factory. This is where I got battered. Right here. But the reality for these football firms today is severe bird, or turning up at a police station on match day. When I mean, hooliganism still exists, it may always exist. It's just it seems that Big Brother definitely has the upper hand. I think the one thing I've learned more than anything else about the firms of the 70s, the 80s is you're witnessing a social history of working class culture. It's, you know, the lifestyle, the fashion. I mean, like it or not, it definitely has its place in that history of the capital. And I mean, if you think about it, these former hooligans, they don't need the media to tell their stories. They're becoming authors, they're becoming successful publishers. It's like the lunatics have taken over the asylum. <laughs>